I'm always looking for new ways to improve my productions. And recently I found a simple and cost-effective way of doing just that. And that is by shooting with an external HD monitor. Now, before I decided to purchase this particular model by Manhattan LCD, I only had access to technical specifications, a few pictures, as well as written user reviews on the internet. So as you can imagine, it's a little difficult to decide which product to buy when you can't see the products for yourself before purchasing. So that's why I decided to put together this little video review. I'm going to point out both the benefits of using an external HD monitor in general, as well as some of the benefits of this specific model by Manhattan LCD. So whether you're already in the market for an external HD monitor or not, hopefully this review will have something of use for you. Using an external monitor on your shoot can help you save time and money by avoiding costly reshoots. When composing a scene with a camera's built-in viewfinder LCD monitor, it can be easy to miss things that can ruin a scene, such as a boom pole or unwanted object entering the frame. With HD productions, hitting critical focus is more important than ever. And the easiest way to guarantee perfect focus is to focus HD in HD. Many consumer and prosumer cameras don't display the entire picture on their built-in LCDs by cropping off the edges. This is known as an overscan picture. An external monitor such as Manhattan LCD's HD8900 solves this problem by offering an underscan mode, giving the shooter the confidence that the image on the screen is the exact same image that is getting recorded. If you ever shoot with clients on set, then having an external HD monitor for live monitoring and playback is a great way to boost productivity by accelerating the client approval process. Finally, a large external monitor makes it easier and much more pleasant to shoot from a tripod for long periods of time. I recently shot a ballet production using my Manhattan monitor, and the difference between using my Sony EX1 built-in LCD and the HD8900 was night and day. Now let's take a closer look at the Manhattan HD8900. At almost 9 inches across, I find the size of the screen to be the perfect balance between portability and usability. On the right side are the console buttons for turning the monitor on and off and for navigating the menus. It might seem strange that the up and down buttons are actually left and right, but this kind of works out better when holding the monitor down in front of you. Above the buttons is the IR port for use with the optional remote control. On the bottom of the monitor are all of the inputs, starting with a 4-pin XLR power connector that's handy if you have a battery belt you'd like to use to power the monitor. Next to it are the component video inputs. I would prefer if these BNC connectors were the much more commonly used RCA type. However, Manhattan LCD provides BNC to RCA adapters to solve this problem. Under these connectors are the DVI and VGA ports for connecting the monitor to a computer. The DVI port also acts as an HDMI port by using the included DVI to HDMI cable. The monitor also comes with an S-Video connector, an RCA video port that once again requires the use of a BNC to RCA adapter, and a 12 volt DC input for powering the monitor with the included AC adapter or optional Tachyon batteries. The final connector is a quarter 20 thread for attaching the monitor to standard accessory shoes. I find that using a Gorilla Pod is a handy solution for mounting the monitor between two tripod handles, putting it at a much more comfortable height for operating while sitting. This also makes the monitor less distracting for other patrons when shooting from the middle of a theater. The back of the monitor reveals what I think is one of the best features, a battery plate for powering it with regular Sony L-Series batteries. This battery plate is an optional add-on, but I think it's a must for anyone with spare Sony batteries. Manhattan LCD also provides optional battery plates for users with Canon and Panasonic batteries. The menus are divided into three categories, picture, main source, and utilities. The picture menu gives you the ability to control every aspect from brightness to contrast to saturation and hue. The aspect size options ensure that your monitor displays your video input in its correct aspect ratio, no matter what it may be. 
The blue only feature is a useful tool for calibrating the monitor. To learn more about how this feature works, simply Google blue only calibrating. The main source menu category allows you to select the desired video inputs. If a required input isn't displayed, then it needs to be enabled by going to the Utilities menu, Setup, Auto Source Seek, and Setup. In Picture-in-Picture -picture mode, you can select two video inputs to be simultaneously displayed on screen. The Picture-in-Picture -picture options include four display modes. The Utilities category offers many more options, including the ability to set which video inputs your monitor should automatically scan for when turned on, the zoom level, and even the color temperature. Here are a couple charts to point out what I think are the HD 8900's main pros and cons. I find that 9 inches is the perfect size to comfortably focus HD video with confidence. There's every type of connector that you could hope for, both analog and digital, as well as HD and SD. The last thing I want on my productions is yet another battery type to worry about. So being able to power the monitor with regular Sony L-Series batteries was a real selling point for me. From what I can tell so far, this monitor is built to last. It's also very lightweight, which is always a welcome feature. Of course, since nothing is ever perfect, here are some of the cons. At 2 inches thick, this monitor is slightly bulky compared to other models that are almost half as thick. But this is only a consideration if your storage space is at an absolute premium. The BNC connectors protrude past the edge of the monitor. With the RCA adapters attached, the connectors stick out even more, making them more prone to damage. It's too bad this monitor doesn't give an on-screen indication of remaining battery life. But to be fair, nor do the external monitors from other manufacturers. Hopefully this is a feature that we'll be seeing soon. With so many options, you can tweak your image to perfectly match that of your camera's LCD. This is the only HD monitor that I know of in its price range that offers picture-in-picture -picture between two HD sources. The user-selectable hotkeys are great for easily accessing commonly used menu options, such as picture-in-picture -picture size and input. These buttons are especially useful since the menu always defaults back to the picture tab instead of remembering the last page visited. If you ever need to use a lens adapter that flips the recorded image, then the image orientation options can fix that problem. The orientation of the menu buttons makes them rather confusing to use. There's also no button to instantly exit the menu. So if you're deep inside the menus, you sometimes need to press the menu button up to five times to exit the menu. Unfortunately, the picture beside picture mode squashes 16x9 inputs to 4x3. This is quite noticeable with the Sony EX1's input. While many menu options are self-explanatory, the 11-page PDF quick guide that comes on CD doesn't explain how to use some of the more obscure options, such as gamma. In this case, the manual only shows three gamma settings, even though the monitor offers 12 settings ranging from 1.0 to 2.6. For some odd reason, flipping the image also flips all of the on-screen displays, including the menus. If you need to rotate the image, just remember to set all of your menu options first. In conclusion, I find that the HD 8900's strong points far outweigh its shortcomings. With so many options and a two-year warranty, this monitor represents a great price per pixel, especially considering that most SD monitors with HDMI cost almost the same, if not more, yet offer only about a third of the pixels. If you do any shooting from a tripod, I strongly suggest you try doing so with an external monitor. And if you shoot it all in HD, the Manhattan LCD's HD8900 makes a wonderful choice. Thanks for watching and happy shooting!